All right, so we know what rational tangles are. They're made up of twists and made up of rotations, and at this point we understand the tangle group well enough to know how twists and rotations interact one with another, uh, how we can invert twists, how we can invert rotations just using more twists and more rotations. So we understand pretty well how the tangle group is built, but that doesn't yet get us to where we really want to go, which is to figure out how to represent a rational tangle with a rational number. We found out in the last video that if we're looking for an invariant for rational tangles, it's not going to be enough for us to find something which represents what happens to just the people standing and holding the four ropes at the corners of the tangle. We need something which can capture all of the interesting crossing behavior inside of a tangle and not just what's happening on the outside. And so rational numbers are going to give us enough flexibility to be able to represent any rational tangle in a unique way. How we get there is we have to look again more closely at the tangle group and figure out if we can find a collection of functions operating on the rational numbers which can interact in the same way as the tangle operations interact with one another and provide us what we call a faithful representation of the tangle group among the rationals. All right, so we know what the tangle group is. It's the free group on T and R, the twists and rotations, with the relations that two rotations in a row, as well as the thrice re repetition of a twist followed by a rotation, give us the identity. And this group acts on the set of tangles by definition. But if we want a numerical invariant for rational tangles, we're going to ask how these operations might transform rational numbers instead. So what I'm really asking for, using again precise language from abstract algebra, how do we define a group action of this group gamma on the rational numbers? More specifically, what that means is we want to associate with each element inside of my tangle group, and it will be sufficient for us to do so just for the twist and rotation operation themselves, and then define the rest just by composition, to associate with T and with R functions I'm going to call them small t and small r, which take rational numbers into rational numbers. And what I want is I want for the same relations that exist here in the tangle group itself, abstractly, I want those relations to also be satisfied by the functions on rational numbers, which we define over on this side. So for example, two rotations in the tangle group give us back the identity. And so I would want to find functions, little r of x, operating on the rationals, for which the composition of r with itself also gives me the identity function on the rationals. So I want this relation in the tangle group to also be satisfied by the functions that I associate them with over in the rational numbers. And then likewise, with the other relation, the threefold repetition of tr gives us the identity back in the tangle group, whatever small t function that I associate with a twist, I need it to satisfy t followed by r followed by t followed by r followed by t followed by r. So this composition of six functions needs to also give me back the identity function on the rationals. That's what it's going to mean for us to define a group action, a faithful group action of gamma on the rational numbers. So the question now that we've boiled it down to is, can we find functions on q which interact one with another in the same way that the operations on tangles do? How do we do that? So we're going to make a couple observations. The first one is that our twisting operation in the tangle group has infinite order. If I twist, followed by another twist, followed by another twist, I can keep twisting as many times as I want to. I never get back to the identity. I never get back to anything which is the same as, as what I had in the middle. Right? So in the tangle group, t has infinite order. And so if we want a faithful representation, we should find a function, little t of x, operating on the rationals, which also has infinite order. And to do that, Let's just think about the additive group of the rationals for a second and ask what element in the additive group of the rationals has infinite order. And it turns out that they all do in the rationals. Um, but if we want a generator, we want to be as sort of uh, as basic as possible, we could choose the number one. One in the additive group of the rationals also has infinite order because one plus one is different from one. One plus one plus one is different. Add another one, and I get something different. Add another one, I get something different. I can keep adding one, and I never get back to the additive identity in the rationals, which is zero. So the number one, we suspect the additive number one, uh, can serve in this capacity of giving us an infinite order element uh, inside of the functions operating on the rationals. And so we'll do that. We'll try associating capital T in the tangle group with the function t of x equals x plus 1 operating on the rationals. 
that function will have infinite order. So what we're saying, and kind of what we're doing when we create a representation, is in Tangle World, over on this side, um, I can think of what happens when I take an arbitrary tangle and I add another twist onto the end of it. That's giving me an operation happening on Tangle World. Passing through the looking glass to the world of rational numbers, what we then are asking is we're asking for whatever, however we associate rational numbers to tangles, adding one more twist to the tangle will add the number one to the rational number used to represent that tangle. So a representation sets up this sort of looking glass, where on one hand we have operations happening to tangles, on the other hand we have operations happening to rational numbers, and these should be related in this fashion. If I add a twist over here, then I'm adding one to the rational number which I'm using to represent that tangle over in rational number world. So that's the first thing we're going to try. We're going to try associating capital T to the function on the rationals which adds one. Second observation, let's think about rotations. Rotations have order two. So this one's a little trickier, because what we're going to have to find is we're going to have to find a way of representing an order two operation by a function on the rationals. So we can't use addition, because um, adding numbers in the rationals, repeatedly adding the same number, is never going to get us back to the identity, unless we're just adding zero repeatedly. But adding zero repeatedly does not give us order two. It gives us order one. So simple addition, like we have in the t operation over here, is not going to be enough to represent what happens when we rotate. So what we need to find next are functions which undo themselves. Functions on the rational numbers which are equal to their own inverse function. Those are going to be the kinds of functions which have a chance at faithfully representing rotation in the tangle group, because those are the functions which are going to satisfy r squared equals the identity. So let's go on the hunt for those functions. We need a function, r of x, on the rationals, which is equal to its own inverse function. Thinking graphically about what that means, remember, to find the inverse function in, in, in a graph, in precalculus, for example, what we'll do is just flip that graph over the diagonal y equals x. So if we're looking for a function which is its own inverse, then we're looking for a function whose graph is symmetric over the diagonal y equals x. And I can think of three different ways to sketch a graph like that. One option might just be to use the other diagonal, f of x equals minus x. That's a function which is equal to its own inverse, right? If I take the opposite of a number, and then I take the opposite of that, I get back to the original. So that's a simple option, but it's not the only option that we could think about when we think about functions on the rationals which undo themselves. Another option might be the reciprocal function, g of x equals 1 over x. Its graph, too, is symmetric about the diagonal line y equals x. Um, and remember, in the rational numbers, if I take the reciprocal of something and then the reciprocal again, I get back to the original number. So reciprocals, too, undo themselves in the rationals. Um, now that we have two examples that are different from one another, we could also combine the two of them together with composition and get a third example. So there, that would be the function h of x equals minus 1 over x. This would be the opposite reciprocal. If I take the opposite reciprocal of a number and then the opposite reciprocal of that, I get back to the original. So all three of these are examples of functions on the rational numbers, which are their own inverses. So each one of them is a potential candidate to be a faithful representation for the rotation in the tangled group. To figure out which one we are actually going to want, we need it not only to satisfy that relation that r squared is the identity, right, that it undoes itself, but we also need it to satisfy the other important relation in the tangled group. Namely, we need to know that the composition of t and r done three times also gets us back to the identity. So we're going to see if any of these are any of these candidates that we wrote down will do that. So there we just need to do some algebra. We'll first take each of these candidates and compose it with t to figure out what tr would look like uh, if this were standing in for our r. And then we'll just compose that tr with itself three times and see what we get. So first, we'll take t and apply it to an x, and that just gives us x plus 1. And then we'll take each of these candidates for r and compose it with that x plus 1. So in the case of f of x equals minus x, that's going to give me minus the quantity x plus 1. For the reciprocal, I get 1 over x plus 1. And for the opposite reciprocal, minus 1 over x plus 1. So this is what the composition tr looks like for each of our candidates for r. Now our job is to compose each of these functions with itself a second time and then a third time. So for the first, in the first case, the second pound composition of this function with itself is minus the quantity minus x plus 1 plus 1. 
which simplifies out to just plain x. And that already should raise a bit of a red flag, um, because we found out here that for this choice of r, tr squared gives us the identity, going from the starting point here to the ending point there. And so probably this is not going to be our right choice for t, um, but we'll check the others and find out what happens there. For our reciprocal function, if I compose the function 1 over x plus 1 with itself, I'll get 1 over 1 over x plus 1 plus 1, which if we simplify that compound fraction by multiplying top and bottom by x plus 1, we'll get x plus 1 over x plus 2. For the opposite reciprocal, minus 1 over minus 1 over x plus 1 plus 1, simplified out, gives me x plus 1 over minus x. So there's the second power for our TRs. We'll compose each of those with TR one more time to figure out what the third power looks like. The third power for this version of TR is just a composition of the function minus quantity x plus 1 with the function x. So we just get minus x plus 1 back again. For the reciprocal, we'll do 1 over this plus 1. And simplifying that compound fraction gives us x plus 2 over 2x plus 3. And for the opposite reciprocal, we'll take minus 1 over this plus 1. And when I simplify that compound fraction, I'll multiply the top and the bottom by minus x. I'm going to get minus minus x over x plus 1 minus x. Finish out that arithmetic. We get an x on top and a 1 in the denominator. And lo and behold, we have discovered that one of these choices for r of x actually does satisfy tr applied to itself three times gives us the identity. And so the opposite reciprocal function would seem to be the choice of r, which both satisfies r squared equals the identity, and for our choice of t, satisfies the composition of tr three times, gives us the identity. And so this r and this t have a shot at giving us a faithful representation of the tangle group using functions operating on the rational numbers. This is super exciting. This is going to get us where we want to go. It may not be the only way for us to represent these operations on the rationals, but it does seem to be a fairly simple and straightforward way uh, to do it. So let's chase down the consequences to wrap up this video. Both of these operations are satisfied, and therefore what this is going to allow us to do is if we can figure out what sequence of t's and r's turn the empty tangle into a tangle of interest, so here was the more complicated tangle from a couple of videos ago. If we know what sequence of t's and r's can build us this tangle starting from the empty tangle, then all we need to do is decide what rational number the empty tangle should have. And then whatever tangle operations were needed to get us from here to here, we'll apply these rational number operations to get us from the number for the empty tangle down to a number for this tangle. And so what we'll do is assign the empty tangle a reasonable rational number. I would say 0 is a pretty reasonable number to assign to the empty tangle. We'll, I think, appreciate the reasons for that better in the next set of videos that we look at. But if we assign the number 0 to the empty tangle, then the number for any other tangle can be found by applying the same t's and r's in the same order to the rational number 0 using these rational functions, 1 plus x and minus 1 over x, um, and that will give us a number for the more complicated tangle. So if we assign the empty tangle 0, does that then give us a unique rational number x representing each of our tangles? So this tangle we could have gotten in tangle world by doing five twists, followed by a rotation, followed by three twists, followed by another rotation, followed by two twists. So this word in the tangle group represents this tangle. If we then use that same combination of small t functions and small r functions applied beginning with the number 0, we'll get a number that should represent this tangle. So if I first apply t of x equals x plus 1 five times to the number 0, I'm going to add 1, and then add 1, and then add 1, and then add 1, and then add 1. It's going to take me from 0 up to 5. The next thing I'm supposed to do, according to this, is to rotate, which means take the opposite reciprocal on the other side of the looking glass. So 5 then turns into negative 1 fifth. Next, I'm supposed to twist three times, which means, on the other side of the looking glass, apply the addition by 1 function three times. So I'm going to add 3 to negative 1 fifth, and that's going to give me 14 over 5. Now that I've done with those three twists, I'm supposed to rotate again, which on this side of the looking glass means opposite reciprocal. So I'll take the opposite reciprocal of five, 14 fifths, and I'll get negative 5 fourteenths. 
Finally, to get to the end of my tangle, I need to do two more twists. So on this side of the looking glass, that means I need to add 1 to this number twice. In other words, add 2 to negative 5 over 14, and that gives me 23 fourteenths. And we would like for that number, 23 fourteenths, to uniquely represent this tangle. We know at this point that the invariance goes one direction. If I have a word in the tangle group that specifies my tangle, I now know exactly how to build a rational number which represents this tangle. Our next question is, does that uniqueness also go the other way? Is it an invariant? Can I always get the same tangle back from this number, 23 fourteenths, every time? If I give that number to somebody else, will they build the same tangle that I build out of it? If the answer is yes, then we would also like there to be an algorithm, right? How do we take a rational number and then figure out which tangle that number represents? Right? So how do we go, how do we travel this invariance road in both directions? And the second and even more exciting question that we're going to explore next is, yes, it's true now that we have a way of associating to tangles rational numbers. But the set of rational numbers is more than just a set, right? It's a field in the sense of abstract algebra. Rational numbers can be added, subtracted, multiplied, divided, as long as we're not trying to divide by zero, right? And so there all this, there's all this arithmetic that we can do with rational numbers. Does that therefore mean that on the other side of the looking glass, that we can do arithmetic on tangles as well? If I can add rational numbers, can I add tangles? If I can multiply rational numbers, can I multiply tangles? And if so, what does that look like? And what more mileage can we get out of that correspondence? So what we're doing, speaking abstract algebraically, is we're trying to discover whether all the rest of the structure that exists on this side of the looking glass in the rationals is also structure that we can observe in the land of tangles. And so that's where we're going to go next. How do we do arithmetic with rational tangles?